डिप्लोमा डुएल कोर्स बैंकिंग एंड फाइनेंस सो Yeah, I have a good background, but you know, I lost touch because after I graduation, I never worked I as an accountant. Okay. Uh, so right now you are working, or um, yeah, yeah, right. But I started, uh, so I moved to Gulf and I'm working uh, as an accountant here. Okay. Uh, from past uh, almost it's been one and a half year, but I'm doing more of basic accountant like bookkeeping type. Uh, Okay. So I, the basically reason I chose entry work basically you are doing with that. Yeah, but I'm taking care of full basic uh, like journal entries of uh, full barin. Okay. For a retail company. Uh, okay. Yeah, like but I'm my base is because of that getting strong and I'm like uh, getting oh, back on track. Oh, that will be that will be yeah. Yeah, which I like it. You know, I'm enjoying the course because of that. Uh, because I feel I can like relate to what I'm doing currently. Correct. Correct. Because I'm the only one alone uh, for this company in Bahrain to take care of accounts, so you know that much. I'm uh, I'm feeling good that I can connect better. You know, Correct. that way. Basically, that you are getting that confidence also that I'm able to do this thing, and that yeah. work profile is somehow helping you in your studies also. So both the yeah, ways and good for both you. the ways actually. It's just been ten days. I've started studying and. Yeah. Uh, From the time I'm studying, I'm studying in such a way that I enjoy the course and try to. Re- That's the not, best uh, way to study. That you do are not taking a pressure, but you are yeah. enjoying it. You are understanding the concept, and I tell you, yeah, actually ACCA wants literally this thing that student need to understand the concepts, because ACCA is a professional exam. Okay, mm-hmm. so you need to be serious first thing, but yeah. they don't want that you cram the concept. they want uh-huh. that you have a understandability of it because questions have a variety of questions will be there okay when you will be doing right now i think you are on a study text like chapter sessions and later on yeah. when you will be um, you know progressing and when you will be moving towards the exam kit the video question marathon yeah. so you will be finding lots of questions so the yeah, basic uh, idea of acca is that student need to have the concept clarity and specifically if i talk about F nine, that is your financial management, mm-hmm. which will because this is the base for your uh, you know advanced level. You will be finding AFM. So if your base mm-hmm. is clear and strong, you will love this, and then gradually you can even you know your roots will be uh, built mm-hmm. in that way that you will able to clear AFM also. And since we are talking about FM, so FM, if you will be looking at the syllabus area, the syllabus area is going to give you help you. I would say not only in your professional career, but it also going to help you if you want to invest in stock market or you want to do mm-hmm. your own investment things because it's about not only about studies that you know it's going to help me in my career and all those things. The commercial knowledge, yeah, that's the financial true. knowledge which you are going that's to true. get. that's going to it's a, it's being termed right these days financial literacy that's going to you will getting that thing that you know what is p ratio what is a debt ratio so it's a very yeah. interesting subject which you will enjoy now yeah. uh, talking about that uh, i just want to know when you are planning to give the exam this june itself june you all are sitting for okay is it possible because actually i got scared uh, because no. all this while I was yeah. like uh, just uh, I'm trying to understand the concept, but then I took out this question bank. Mm-hmm. You know, first few questions like till the question twenty one I could solve, but after twenty one I'm not able to figure out from where is the question. Uh, so I want help in uh, that okay, way from you. Okay, okay, okay. See, uh, uh, more yeah, you, uh, I'm lost yeah. after that. You know. Okay. See, I tell you, uh, if you will be looking at the question bank, question bank is a mix. Okay. Uh, yeah. Questions from everywhere. 
So I always suggest my students that first complete your entire sessions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then after completing the sessions, go to the revision session. If you will be looking at the video question marathon, there's a small, I think one, one and a half hour revision session I have given. Go through yeah, that correct. also so that you, what's going to happen? Like suppose you have completed all the sessions. Now the mm -hmm. session number one, whatever you have done, you might not be you know able to recall it. So just go through that revision session. Yeah. And then start doing the uh, this thing the uh, you know the main exam kit questions and before setting for exams i always suggest my student that at least complete exam kit the video question marathon at least twice if you can go further if you can do thrice mm -hmm. or more than that that's good. you mean the same thing no which uh, yeah the, like uh, the question bank you're given correct, 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 correct. but you have to okay. because see at like when you are going to do a first time first time is what is going to happen you will face difficulties there are lots of questions yeah, correct. you will not get the concept clarity so you will ask me that you know the this in this particular question i'm facing the problem i will explain you that this like the way i have explained that day also that this is a problem and this is yeah. a solution yeah so first time in first time what's going to happen you will get the concept clarity okay when you yeah. will be doing second time then there is a confidence building okay you are understanding yeah. first time concept clarity second time confidence building and then yeah. after that you know third four time you have we will also give you the mock papers so when you will do the mock papers again you know you will get a confidence that yes i can sit for the exam in the june and see if you are, you know, 100% dedicated towards the exam, it's not like that mm -hmm. you cannot do it. It's not like that, I'm telling you. But it is a professional exam, so you have to devote a certain amount of time. It's not like a BCom exam. Yeah, yeah. daily I'm done. like uh, able yeah. to manage like yeah. certain so time. That That's I can question. understand because uh, you are in my touch. You ask the question. So I can understand that what kind of student is this particular one. So I'm getting yeah. that thing that, yeah, you are serious about mm -hmm. it. But I'm explaining you but I have, how, hmm, yeah. Yeah, I want uh, like, uh, you know, to uh, guide me even in uh, like for the exam point of view, because, you know, I've lost that plus this is my first exam in ACCA. Correct, correct. That motivation is not coming and there is a butterfly in the stomach that what's going to happen in the exam. Will I be able yeah. to do it or not that? I understand. Yeah, exactly. And I tell you, Shweta. Uh, last time also and like in my last webinar also there was one student mm -hmm. who was uh, like he has the same problem that ma'am I have started like we started my studies again and mm -hmm. I'm not able to do it and all that and he was able to clear the exam so see oh, firstly okay. you have to have this confidence that yes I mm -hmm. can do this okay secondly mm -hmm. I would say like uh, uh, what is your like working hours normally yeah, working as is quite flexible, like 10 to 6 and uh, by 6.30, I'm free. 6.30, you are free. Okay, fine. Yeah. So yeah. after 6, like after 6.30, take a break of one, one and a half hour. Okay. Take your dinner, do your dinner, everything. And yeah. then have this plan that every day from 8 to 10 in the evening, I will be doing mm. the uh, FM. And in the mm. morning also, uh, let's say mm -hmm. you take 7 to 8, 3 hours. Okay. I will be doing. Okay. This is this is this mm -hmm. should be your, uh, I would say weekday routine. Okay, that okay. three hours in a weekday I will be giving. Then let's talk about weekends. So I will be, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you will be uh, off on Saturdays and Sundays. So on those days. No, actually have... the problem is issue is yeah we I have off only on Monday, Fridays. Achha. Okay, Fridays. Achha, okay, in the, yeah because I'm working Friday. for a retail company. Correct, correct. So, yeah. Okay. So you have a off on Friday. So yeah. now what you need to do that on Friday, you need to compensate for the hours, whatever yeah. you have not done in the week uh, ends. So mm -hmm. what you have to do on uh, like a weekend, I would suggest like initially, and uh, if you are going to give more time, then it would be more mm -hmm. helpful because what's going more to helpful. happen if, if you are if initially you are thinking that, okay, I will study two, three, four hours. And later on, I will, you know, progress and mm -hmm. I will pick up the speed. That's not going to help. From now mm -hmm. onwards, because you're planning for June, so it's mm -hmm. April, May, and in June starting, you will be having exams. Yeah. It's yeah. Thing. Okay. So let's practical that in uh, like uh, the Friday with the off you have. You have to give at least six to seven hours. It's a very simple mm -hmm. thing that you have to find out at least six hours. And uh, mm -hmm. let me give you a plan also. So right now yeah. it's April and you are saying that from past 10 days, you are, you know, going through the content and everything. So yeah, and I've reached uh, right now hmm. uh, till uh, capital budget. Okay, so you have a done till capital budget. Okay, so your pace is yeah. good. 
that i can say yeah, that you are pace is good so try to complete the entire course the entire course yeah end, and which i can understand that the pace with which you are going you can do it okay it's not that hard because you are in capital budgeting now there are chapters like sources of finance and the cost of capital which are little bit on a theory side and the business valuation then uh-huh, you will uh-huh. be having a chapter of uh, forex and all those uh, like uh, the risk measurement which will be the practical portion so okay. the in between chapters are a theory chapter which can be done a little faster because capital budgeting and working capital are the one which require little like capital budgeting working capital and if i talk about risk measurement these are the chapter which require more time okay after capital budgeting there are four five chapter which will not consume like yeah, that theory much actually i am feeling that it's more related to bcom what i did yeah it's basically Theory. more related to b but some are like little different i'm getting i have doubts in some much yeah 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 and that's why i answered you also are wait wait it seems that most of you who are watching this video have not subscribed to our channel you would miss the new videos and the updates subscribe now and press the bell icon so basically what i'm saying over here that try to complete your entire course till april end then mm-hmm. uh, from like in the may in mm-hmm. 10 10 uh, days try to complete the exam kit the exam kit okay. okay so like in first 10 days of uh, you know you completed the exam kit then again till 20th may complete the exam kit then sit for uh, mock papers after okay. completing exam kit twice sit for the mock papers and then i will suggest you more that if you like if you uh, done all of these thing properly then i will suggest you that now shweta what you have to do further but i have given you a planner that this need to be done yeah. in this amount of sure, sure 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 so you sure. have a clarity then then after giving the mock papers you are in touch with me so i will tell you now shweta this is the thing which you need to do and also then you will be able like after doing the uh, exam kit twice and giving mock papers you will be actually able to identify that what are my problem areas what are my weaknesses actually. yeah okay so once uh, right now you are not able to identify what is my weakness right now you are just doing everything for the first time once you are able mm-hmm. to identify that these are my weakness or the strength or the problem area then i will be we will be talking about that uh, shweta that these are the things which you need to do these are the things which you need to handle in this particular way mm-hmm. so that's why i want you that complete the entire course till first like uh, the april end complete the exam kit twice by 20th of may give two more okay. papers after that uh, we will be talking about that now what we need to do because i want that entire thing should be completed in the may itself nothing should be left for the first week of june that at that point of time your mind should be mm. relaxed your mind should be in a state that yeah. i have that confidence Okay, because I want you yeah. to give this paper for the first time, and when you are going to give yeah. paper for the first time, there is a little bit, you know, that confidence uh, will shake hundred percent. When you are going to yeah. give paper next time, like F seven, F six, whatever you are going to give for the next time, at that yeah, point, you will know what is the format, how I need to study. Yeah, correct. Okay, correct. so that is the reason I am saying that you have to have to do these things at this particular point mm. in time, so that we have an idea over that. Okay. Now, uh, second most important thing uh, in FN, if I talk about theory and practical, they both are important. Okay, it's not okay. like that uh-huh. you can leave the entire theory like that. Okay, mm-hmm. so uh, it, you can uh, consider it like that: that forty percent will be your theoretical, and sixty okay. percent will be your practical. Maximum, okay. I'm saying theory will be your forty percent. Okay, that you need to know at this point in time so that you can you know prepare yeah. accordingly. Okay, but this uh, Now, theory will come in uh, like what format? Like MCQ that, that, format that, only, that, or that only I'm coming up. So theory in ACCA in any of the exam, whether it is F seven, F nine, any of the exam, they will not mm-hmm. be going to ask you the direct question. Okay, if they are mm-hmm. saying that, tell me what is working up. That's not it's going mm-hmm. to. it okay. will be if working capital is high what will be its impact on the organization or if it, you are going for a capital budget thing that if we mm-hmm. buy this uh, you know asset what will mm-hmm. be its impact on the organization or whether we should buy it or whether we should not buy it it is in the way of recommendation conclusion in those format it, it will be and okay. also one thing is that also if i talk about the exam pattern 
okay okay so our uh, entire course our entire mm-hmm. course structure it is being divided into three you know sections the first section which we have is basically section a okay in which mm-hmm. mcq questions are being asked then we have in a yeah in a yeah in a mcq questions are being asked and okay. then we have and these mcq questions are majorly you can consider them that a theoretical part is more again the conceptual theory okay they will give you some mm-hmm. question and then they mm-hmm. will be uh, giving you four options and you have to select the four option on the basis of concept clarity so or mm-hmm. they can be like you know calculate ebq if the practical come like this way so the ebq formula is very simple or they will be mm-hmm. going to say that calculate you know npb a simple question mm-hmm. of npb and that is the way it would be so that is a uh, section a then we have section okay. b section uh, section a the weightage goes your yeah, 30 marks 15 into 2 15 okay. questions of 2 marks each that goes for 30 marks simple mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then we have section b in section b we have uh, two questions of 10 10 marks each but these are the case study based questions so uh, like a small case study will be given to you and then mm-hmm. they will be asking you five questions of 2 2 marks each total make it to 10 marks okay but it is a case study this based question but hmm. this uh, under this case study of each 5 uh, into 2 it mm-hmm. come under one chapter only or is the mixture from one all chapter. the chapters majorly it is like one chapter that they can suppose let's say give a case study of uh, capital budgeting then they ask mm-hmm. you in the sub section that what is npv what is irr what is the concept of npv irr like somehow it is related to it and when will you mm-hmm. be going to the exam get the video question marathon you get a very good idea i have done a good amount of questions over there mm-hmm. in that particular section so that's mm-hmm. the section b then talking mm-hmm. about section c in section c you will get one like there will be a question of 20 marks it's a big case study so section b is a small case study section c is okay. a big case study okay, okay. Uh-huh. in which uh, again the combination will be like 8 or uh, you know 6 4 that can be combination or 5 okay. 5 some way it will be like the, that way the combination will be but the total will be of 20 marks so what i'm trying to say over here hmm? section b or section c the questions will be on a case study based so mm-hmm. firstly i have even you know in my video question marathon also i have told you that for the case study based question you need to like you know when you are reading the question make a little bit summary of it and through that summary try to solve the question mm, don't yeah. do it like you know you are reading the question twice thrice and don't do that also you can mm. you know when you will be doing those question then you will be having more queries and everything then you will be asking me more question so that that one don't mind i will be taking that question but as of now i am telling you that how you need to proceed those questions that you yeah. know, that is one thing yeah. also yeah. uh, when i said that there is a theory of 40 marks each so a lot of theory is being com- covered in your section a part that because it's mm-hmm. a 15 into 2 so it's a mcq based question so theory is not like direct theory you have to write yeah. a definition or something in a mcq they can give you some theoretical question for which you need for which you need to have a concept clarity and by that you can answer that question that is the way the questions will be asked in the okay exams. okay mm-hmm. yes so uh, so we have talked about how you will be your study plan we have talked about the <coughs> the exam pattern and uh, yeah. uh, okay any more query you want to ask you can also ask yeah but this thing uh, what about the choices like in which section i have choice choices in the way see uh, as such like in the mcq part there will be no uh, choices will be given there will be straight 15 questions that you have to go for okay yeah and uh, in the section b also as such there is no choice there will be those two you know case studies which you have three mm. case studies which you have to go for in section c also sometime they give it but normally it's not a choice so generally there is not like there is any choice choice thing okay you mm-hmm. have to like attempt all the questions and uh-huh. i personally believe that you have to attempt all the questions because there is no negative marking so leaving oh, okay. behind any question is total a stupidity act that you should not go for you should attempt 100% paper 
in this case studies like do we get marks like how is the marking scheme like on the step wise or yeah yeah step by step by so okay they have, they but what, a... what about computer based exam like this cb exam so the exam will be in a computer based format uh, and hmm. you have to like the entire thing you will have to show on the sheets only like you have to have a basic knowledge of excel and the basic knowledge of ms word that you need to have so it's a theory okay. question you need to type and answer it if it's a you know little um, i would say a practical question so you have to show, uh, you know in the excel or the spreadsheet you have to show the working that how you reach to that question or to that answer mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. Then uh, I am like that's why uh, I asked you initially that what is your working profile. So what I am understanding from you that you have a basic understanding of Word and the uh, sorry, yeah, correct, and correct. the Excel. Yeah, that's okay. Then uh, yeah, the basic thing uh, that later on I can practice right uh, once uh, before the actual exam. Uh, which thing regarding the video question marathon you are asking me? Uh, no, no, no. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, this I can't do the questions like uh, side by side after I finish yeah, every chapter. Do. See, you can You uh, want to do it like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, I'm really not lost up to the question 20. See, uh, what you can do is, uh, because there is a little bit mixed, but you can, what you can do is, like, let's suppose you started with working capital. So till the time you are able to do the questions of working capital, Okay. Yeah, you do it when you realize that this is something new which we haven't studied or which we haven't you know talked about in the session. That means somehow then it is related to the next chapter or next yeah. session. So you can and learn what I have tried in my video question marathon also that I have like start like whatever my session one the questions of session one are there then second then third then fourth so there is a little bit continuity but somewhere here and there one two questions will be randomly but still you will find a little bit continuity that you know initially there will be working right. capital chapter then capital budgeting but you need to identify that's why i suggest to the student that after doing that you can do that you do because, it uh, that is a little bit uh Challenges troublesome, troublesome because you have to identify the questions. Yeah, once you identify, it's fine. I mean, you yeah. Know. yeah, then it's fine. If you can do that, you can uh, perfectly. Yeah, I think I need to complete the entire thing because I'm not able to figure out right now. Yeah. But uh, in section 8 till 21, I'm able to figure out, but in B and C, not at all. No, I don't know why. Because right now you haven't done the entire thing now. So once you will, because uh, section C questions are from working capital, from uh, capital budgeting part and also from the risk measurement. So there's a possibility that the question might be of risk measurement. Yeah, and, have, and that is the last topic. And you haven't studied that topic. So yeah, right. you will face a difficult yeah, 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 part. So that's the reason. But uh, are there like particular chapters which will come like more in B and C? See, uh, if I talk about section C, so they generally, ACC generally say that uh, we normally focus on working capital, capital budgeting, and the risk measurement part. That is a risk of interest and the risk of foreign exchange. So these, these are the topics which they consider primarily for these three, uh, for section C. But which one risk? Risk measurement, the last part, the last section which we have, last um, three, four uh, The sessions. risk of... Uh... Risk of capital budgeting, capital, and capital budgeting, budget, capital budgeting, and uh, uh, working capital. Okay, so, so these three. are the huh, these are the three topics with from which the risk normally, one you're talking about same now, which is coming under capital budgeting. No, I'm talking about uh, risk of interest and risk of currency. These are session number I think 22, 23. Yeah, I'm not done this. I think yeah, uh, that's, no? that's that. That's why. So these are session number 21, 22, 23, 24. So th those uh, four sessions, then the capital budgeting, the entire everything like uh, mm -hmm. IRR, NPV, everything, and in working capital also everything. I think it is starting from session four, five, six, seven. Yeah. These four yeah. sessions. So these are the sessions, like these are the topics which are uh, normally being asked in section C. But in section okay. A and section B, they don't have any such criteria. They have okay. stated that anything can come from anywhere. Mm -hmm. so got, it, got it, okay. got it, got it. Yeah, sure. Okay. So uh, okay. So now, any more questions you also have want to ask? Can ask. Uh, 
No, I'm as of now fine. Maybe next, uh, you know, me um, week if I have something. But I have little few doubts in capital budget. You know, maybe that you can, you know, uh, because I have to look at the question and because that day also you right. uh, you told me that, and I told you that you have to send me a pic and I yeah. Have to- so yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, exactly. one more thing. Uh, yeah. So, you know, actually, frankly, um, my uh, knowledge on uh, related to tax is very low. So when the sums came, uh, any word with tax in capital budgeting, I'm like forgetting See, everything. Uh, I tell you one thing in capital budgeting regarding the taxation. There's only yeah. one concept which I think regarding the taxation, that is the depreciation concept. Yeah, correct. Uh, correct. And uh, in that concept, there's a very simple thing which you need to understand that we don't take depreciation is what depreciation is a non-cash item. Okay. And I have already yeah. told you that in capital budgeting, we only take items which are from which we have either cash outflow or inflow. So regarding depreciation, we will be taking only the tax benefit. Now, why will we be taking tax benefit? What do you mean? Like, yeah, I don't know these terminologies. Yeah, in tax. So I'm getting stuck because of that. I'm explaining that only. So, yes. So, uh, you know, my uh, weakness is in these terminologies. I really don't understand all this. Uh, so we were talking about tax benefit. So let me explain you. Depreciation is what? Depreciation is expenditure for the organization. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we charge it in a PNL. Okay. But we also know that it's a non-cash item. But whenever some, uh, you know, whenever something is an expenditure for an organization, it mm-hmm. reduces our profit. And since it reduces our profit, it gives us because of that we the tax charges also reduces. Simple thing. Let's say you have a ten thousand profit, a uh, gross profit. Mm-hmm. Okay. From that you subtract it. Fifty thousand is expenditure. Okay, now remaining is how much? Remaining is 50,000. Now, if you will be charging taxation, you will be charging on this 50,000, the remaining balance, the remaining net profit, correct? So yeah. if let's say the tax rate is 10%, so 50,000 into 10%, that's 5,000 is your, <clears throat> 5,000 is your tax thing. But let's suppose yeah. this expenditure was not there. So your initial, uh, this thing, your initial uh, gross profit was one lakh. And there was no expenditure. Now, if you have to pay tax, it will be 1 lakh into 10%. That is 10,000. Let's talk about this, that you have a 10, 1 lakh as your net gross profit. Okay. This is your gross okay. profit. Okay. 1 lakh profit. Let's first understand the concept. Then you can write it. So let me just uh, write the concept and then you can write it down. Yeah. So the tax rate is 10%. So on 1 lakh, if I will be paying from the te- 10% tax rate, the... Tax will be 10,000, simple and easy. Correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah. But let's suppose my GP is 1 lakh and then there is some other expenditure. There's a depreciation expenditure of 50,000. Okay. So my leftover net profit now is how much? 50,000. 50,000. On that, the rate remains the same. So I am now going to pay a tax of 5,000. So you're now understanding that because of this depreciation element, my tax which I was earlier going to pay to 10,000, that will decrease to 5,000. This okay. 5,000 is termed as tax benefit. Uh, okay. And because of this depreciation thing, there is a less cash outflow. What I'm saying, less cash outflow from the hmm. organization. And in capital budgeting, we also consider if we are saving some, saving of cost, is also mm. considered as cash inflow. Yeah. So this is save. You are saving some cost. You are saving how much? Five thousand. What is it? This month? Yeah, five thousand. So this is. That's why this five thousand will be considered as uh, your tax cash benefit. Inflows. Tax benefit, which will be considered as your cash inflow. Now you got the mm. concept. Yeah, correct. And there's something more. So in uh, when it comes to tax. Uh, this is the only concept I should be more knowing, right? Yeah, regarding like in capital budgeting, from my point of view, this is one concept which you will be having. If in any other concept you have a confusion, then you can, you know, send me the pick of the question. And I will yeah, sure. That also. Yeah, I'm actually getting confused. Uh, like when to use cumulative cash flow and when to use compounding. Cumulative and compounding, or I think it's in chapter eight. Uh, 
As the time grew, the money value decreases. Like if you have T zero, T zero that is at year zero. And I just say T zero, yeah. year zero. If you have hundred rupees, okay, and uh, at T one, if you have hundred rupees, they don't have the same value because mm. at T zero, whatever hundred rupees you have, you have invested that hundred rupees. Let's say at the rate ten percent, okay. So okay. it will become you will get an interest of ten. So this hundred will become one one zero, hundred yeah. plus this ten. So this will become one one zero at T one. So with the time, the money value decreases in the terms. So when I will be calculating discounting factor, see, I have also explained one more concept over there. There's this concept of uh, uh, compounding. Yeah. In compounding, what we do, if I have hundred rupees at T zero. And I want to calculate that what will be its value at T one. That yeah. is the concept of compounding. That wherever I am going from T zero to T one, that is basically I am calculating the future value. Future value. Yeah, correct. But if I am going on the reverse direction, that if I have, you know, second value. Yeah, no need to find the present value. Present discount. value. Then you have to go at the T zero. And how you will be finding it? By the discounting factor. Discounting factor is going to you know whatever your cost of capital because every organization have a certain mm. cost of capital. Cost of capital basically cost of uh, interest which you pay on debentures or bonds, or the cost uh, of dividends. So the aggregate or the average is going to give you cost of capital. Hello? Which again you yeah. yeah yeah which again you will be understanding in the I think sessions of. 11 12 13 session where there i have explained the concept of cost of capital so you always want okay. that your money should at least grow at the rate of your cost of capital because you have borrowed those funds so you will be wanting yeah. that your return should be at least equal to the interest which i am paying that's why we use discounting factor in as like like the rate which we use for discounting factor is equivalent to my cost of capital of the company and at that rate we basically you know discount or calculate the present value and the future value Now so basically discount yeah yeah so basically discount factor is used when we want to find the present value of the fu uh, future money invested correct right correct okay mm. so this When do I? Yeah, I'm getting confused. When do I use this cumulative or compounding yeah, cash flow? You know, in the sum. If uh, in the question, if the cash flows for all the years are same, then you get use the cumulative compounding one. But if it is not same, if like in one year it is twenty thousand, next year forty, fifty, it's fluctuating. Then you cannot use a cumulative discounting factor. Then you have to use a separate discount factor. But if every year it is twenty, twenty, twenty thousand, so you can multiply one twenty thousand with the cumulative discount factor. Okay, so when the cash flows are same, use hmm. cumulative. Cumulative discount factor. But if it is not same, then you have to use the individual discount factor for every year. send me the uh, like uh, the question in which you are struggling because then i will be able to assess like exactly what is the problem yeah yeah because right now i am giving answer on like on a general yeah, this is the but main yeah. my weakness is in terminology <laughs> yeah. you can ask me like because uh, actually what happens is the basics of fm we teach in uh, ma in pm and you know we basically understands that till the student reach f9 there are some concepts which he knows but you can mm. ask me like if in any terminology you feel that you know that ma'am i am not able to go on this particular word you can just mm -hmm. whatsapp me or um, you know telegram me that uh, yeah, what yeah, this sure. mean is so i can i explain you yeah and one last thing uh, i have actually doubts in uh, two sums that i will ask you later mm -hmm. but i want to know one minute uh, some rules for nominal rate for discounting in chapter 9 capital yeah, yeah. budgeting yeah yeah 
Correct, correct. Yeah, the theory part, I'm like really not able to figure out. Okay, see, uh, the normal interest rate theory, firstly, it's a conceptual theory. So when you are going to solve questions, basically, this part will be get cleared there only. Because uh, in theory, I might have written the effective interest rate and I have asked to calculate that from normal to effective, this is the way you will be going through. Mm. So I will suggest that, you know, first see some questions which I have done regarding the normal or the effective interest rates. Then only mm. you will be able to understand that, okay, this is actually what this, you know, uh, Bam is talking about or asking about. Because just reading the theory is not going to help you out. So that's yeah. why I told you that you have to do portions along with the theory. Yeah. Then only you will get the concept. Because see, uh, the sticks benefit question. If I would have explained just by words, you will not be able to got it. As if yeah, I have the practical example, then you will be able to get it. Okay, the 5,000 has, you know, from 10,000 to 5,000, we have degrees. So that's why it's being called benefit to the organization. Yeah, so that's what correct. I'm suggesting. Uh, because I what I am understanding from my side that you might be facing a little bit problem in normal and the effective interest rate and how they work out. So first, see some questions regarding it which I have solved. And then... Mm -hmm. Uh, you actually then you will be able to understand that okay this is happening what I am understanding from now that you are not even even to understand what is happening first you understand that this is happening in that also mm. what is the problem what is the calculation then we will be you know I will be able to right. give the mm. better answer to it sure let me check out and then get back to you correct correct yeah okay. I will do that sure okay so now you have to have the plan and you will be working as per the plan only complete the entire yeah. course by April till 20th May. You have to do both of your, you know, twice the video question marathon. You have to give mock papers. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times students does not give mock papers. And trust me, that's the biggest mistake which they do. If you're going to give the mock paper, you are already like, you are already prepared for the exam. That, okay, this is the problem which I will like. And also... When you give mock paper in a three-hour time limit, you also need, you know, understand that, okay, whether, uh, you know, my time is, uh, I'm able to manage the time or not, because this is also one problem which a lot of students face, which you might not mm. be facing as of now, because now your concentration is understanding of concepts. But once yeah. you, you know, understood the concept and done the questions, then this time management things arise. So that's why yeah, I correct. will suggest you that please give mock papers and mm. uh, ask query whatever query you have uh, to me on mail or in telegram whatever yeah, sure. like. sometimes I answer just like that and sometimes I take 5-10 you know yeah, yeah, sure, but no I will issues. be reaching out to you so that's that Shweta okay sure okay yeah sure I have actually some uh, doubts in two doubts in uh, two sums of captive budgeting I'll send you later on yeah you can send me and I will see to them and answer Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Okay, yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. Conf and please be confident. That's the first and most important thing I would say because this is your first paper. Confidence yeah. is the key right now. So trust me, I have like, I know of where you are working on and I have seen your pace and in 10 days you have reached to capital budgeting. You are going with a good pace. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no problem you can complete you will you will be able to complete entire course by i think april very easily but uh, you have to be you know punctual discipline the basic things which you need to have mm -hmm. and faith on you yeah correct so, yeah correct so now uh this one actually i haven't paid for the exam fees yet uh so by april mid i can just decide and pay right yeah, yeah. And also, uh, you know, once uh, for that, I will say uh, connect to Pooja also. Pooja or Swatinam, they will guide you better in that particular, you know, perspective. So sure. connect to them and they ask them that how you can process in that. Sure. Okay, sure. Then. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. Bye.